The only hope for me is you. I think that's, that's my trick. chemical romance. I'm gonna go with Gerard on that one. I'll second that. Yeah, it's my chemical oh. romance. Take that, MTV. I didn't think it was possible to miss a person this much. That's the show. That's the umbrella. I didn't think it was possible. Oh, that was, uh, it was Alice. That's Alice, yeah, with yeah. the baby. I don't love you like I did yesterday. Uh, MRC, I would say, I don't, I, unless it was Aiden. MCR, you mean? Sorry, MRC. What did <laughs> MRC I is a studio <laughs> in LA. <laughs> I've been saying MRC the whole time. Sorry, Gerard. Uh, I don't love you like I did yesterday. I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm gonna second Dave on that one. With MRC. With MRC. It's the newly renamed MRC. <laughs> if you love music, then you're in the right place. That's MRC. Yeah, my chemical, yeah. yeah. We never said, we don't even acknowledge music with us, do we? My chemical, yeah, I think that's my chemical romance, isn't it? <gasps> there is no mystery here, nothing to avenge. Uh, that's, yeah. That's, that's the me. umbrella, baby. Ties that bind you together make you stronger than you are alone. I think that's Umbrella Academy again, isn't it? Probably Dad's. Pogo name. or, oh yeah, Dad, yeah. We're on your property, standing in V formation. <laughs> That, that sounds a, like yeah, chemical sounds romance. MRC, yeah, I'd say. Yeah. You headbutt me in the face. Yeah, that was quite funny. I almost broke his nose, actually. Yeah. It's like, he was trying to protect me from getting shot, and I kind of whipped my head back. And he just, yeah. Just like blood, like like Master Roshi and Goku, just like all yeah. this blood was just creeping out. Like, ah. Yeah, it was fun. We had sushi after that. We talked. We about did, it. yeah. yeah we, did. we had a cuddle. And that day, I was supposed to be absolutely wrecked drunk on vodka. So I was already in this kind of very like state of mind, uh, and then the one sort of heroic thing that Klaus sort of does, kind of half clumsily, is sort of save his life from being shot by yeah. Cha Cha. And what does he get for it? Headbutt in the face. Montreal together. We did go to Montreal, yeah, yeah. for a couple of nights. We met a teacher, a teacher who was oh, a comedian. Yeah. 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 He was, we were in this, what was it, it was it a Thai restaurant? Uh, yeah, it was, it was great, actually, really good Thai food. Um, we met this guy who was really hung over and he was picking up delivery. And he was a school teacher, but he was also a comedian on the side. And he hadn't slept for 48 hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was just wrecked. And yeah. he actually, he's, he, uh, he gave us a good steer because later on we went down and watched comedy in this comedy club because we're like we're in Montreal we have to go watch some comedy yeah so that's um, how we kind of instilled the chemistry between yeah. Uh, yeah a little bit and earlier on before we started filming we had almost two weeks um, at the end of 2017 there to kind of just get in a conference room and play around and do some sort of workshopping and see what sort of organically comes up. And I think all the time spent conveys in the show, you know, yeah. before we start filming. Because we were very familiar with each other by that time, so. Yeah. We all you really have to be fully aware when you're when you're working with this guy, because it's like, you, you have to know that every take is going to be somewhat different. And, uh, and if you're stuck in a certain way, it's not gonna work, it's not gonna breathe. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I'm gonna slightly bandwagon on Dave's answer. It was a very relaxed, very um, sort of improvisation welcome environment, which you don't always get. And it's just so, it's so liberating when you get time to sort of play around and massage the scene and mess it up and try a stupid thing, make everyone laugh or make everyone not laugh. <laughs> you know, so it's nice when you get that uh, that freedom. That was one of the big things for this. I thought Cinnamon, the, that one was really, really mm -hmm. good. Um, you know, just gave a nice little tempo to the fight because it, it kind of juxtaposes what you're saying. Yeah, I liked the use of uh, Noel Gallagher's High Flying Birds as well, which pops up there. It pops up in an apocalypse moment. And it just, it, it, I don't know why it works so well, you know, I suppose that's Jeff Russo's skill. Um, but it was really nice to hear, because that album was relatively familiar in my culture brain, so it was nice, like, oh, I love that song. Yeah, Noel Gallagher. What episode was that? 
That was episode five, I think. There's a bit where it shows kind of five's day to day as he survives in the apocalypse, you know? So he's dragging a trailer from oh, the storm. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, And it yeah, shows him yeah. get older, you know? But that song that kicks in at the start of five, I really love that song. Okay. Noel, if you're watching this, and I assume you are, <laughs> I love you. Did you ever see any seahorses when you were in Dubai? Seahorses? Yeah. No. Oh, man. Why? Are you a big seahorse guy? Yeah, huge. <laughs> no, um, I just, uh, I just thought maybe out there in those exotic waters, there could be some seahorses. I'll go looking for you. I'll take some selfies yeah. with the seahorses for you. I went scuba diving once and met a seahorse. You know, oh, in right. Mexico. There's like they release like thousands of babies when they have babies. Do they? Oh, yeah. And the men do as well. Wow. We're sorry, we're late. Go out, ahead. Out of their cool. man vaginas. <laughs> Apologies. <that's laughs> so. Easy pivot into Umbrella Academy. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about sandals. Go ahead. Let's talk about them. So, how was this series pitched to you to begin with? Like, were you, did you know the comic book? Or were you a fan of Gerard Way? Like, how was your characters pitching, and how did you want to get involved? I needed a job. <laughs> that's kind of how I went. He was living under a bridge, yeah. eating, uh, eating Rice Krispies and with uh, no milk. Costco was, tuna cans. That's yeah, it was a sad day. Uh, well, I was unaware of the comic book, but... I got introduced to the the whole idea of the show and how the show was going to sort of develop and undulate from what the graphic novel was, you know. Steve Blackman and I had lots of long conversations where we batted our eyelashes at one another across Skype and just, just said, the moment we meet in the flesh, whoa, I'm going to give you <laughs> such a cuddle. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, d Steve took me on the... The journey, you know, that, that sort of Klaus went on. And it sounded so wonderfully unique and bonkers that I went, yeah, I'm up for that, yeah. Mm. And then I said, have you met my mate Dave? He needs a job at the moment. Yeah, I was under the bridge <laughs> at that time. Um, he was passing by and dropping out the tuna can. <laughs> Singing yeah. red hot chili peppers to yourself. I was yeah. just tr dropping them off the bridge. My you beard know, was, was like, as ah. big as yours, actually. Yeah, it was because I live under a bridge. Like, it was a like, weird coincidence. Yeah, yeah. my mom says that all the time. Oh, my Keeps God. your chin warm. <laughs> That's... Especially now, but yeah, how was it returning to you know the world of superheroes yeah. as well? Because can I just say that "Save Me, Barry" is still the funniest thing I've ever heard on television? <laughs> like that's my favorite line of all time. Wow, well, that's a great honor, sir. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. I just had to throw that out there. But yeah, yeah I, mean, so I wish I wrote it, but you know, I <laughs> delivered it. To say it, yeah. It's all the delivery. Well, yes, it's great. It's very interesting, and it's been ten years. You know, yeah. it has a certain poignancy when you think of it that way because. Um, I was 21 when we shot the first series of Misfits, and I'm 30 when we shot the first series of this. And it's, um, you know, I, I, I kind of said before that Klaus is definitely, even though he's probably in ways as mature, as arrested in his emotional development almost as uh, as Nathan was, he's kind of in a state of perpetual change, Klaus, you know, he has there's more of a fragility to him you know Nathan was I think loved and very endearing because he um, he's just so completely cocksure of himself that he was never ever going to change you know he was just a child who was just going to get older and hairier and Klaus is this kind of fragile sort of sort of china cup of a person who is kind of uh, is still very redeemable and you know very different so what, you know, one is 10 years old than the other in many ways, you know. Mm. So you're playing this, you know, dysfunctional family. Mm. How was, you know, building the camaraderie? How did you guys get, did you do anything to, to get to know each other as a cast? And what was the, the, you know, the feeling like so on set? Loads of dinners and stuff, didn't we? And yeah. like, well, I mean, we had rehearsals, but mm. it, it, really, it really worked to the dynamic of the being of the season when we really didn't really know each other. And, and mm. I think that, it, that, that distance as families translated as us really just getting to know each other mm. three weeks, maybe a month prior to actually shooting. Mm. And then as obviously the season goes along, you know, the bonding as outside of the set kind of became stronger. You kind of felt that going into, you know, the later episodes. Yeah. We were all away from home, so whoever, whoever else had the day off, you'd text them and go, do you want to go do something? And, you know, and you'd just sort of head off an afternoon and do yeah. some stuff. What were you going to say? Now I'd be like, nah. <laughs> Leave him on read. That asshole. Yeah, no, just delete that one. I didn't see that one. Take me to a seahorse museum. <laughs> Screw this guy. I'm not gonna go see the Warsaw. 
Well, thank you guys so much. Pleasure. Oh, we're done. Yeah, oh, we're done already. Yeah, right, I just right. got the wrap up. We talk about the seahorses too. Let's just lay it on. Do you know, place. David regularly, like he, he'll find like a little notepad or post-it notes or something, a pen, and he'll just start scrawling. It might be some couplets of a, uh, of a poem or it might be some thoughts that's going to develop into a story later on. He'll just, he's like, he's like, so he's like, I heard a story about Shane McGowan and the Pogues, where he's just constantly drawing, like, tissue, napkins, post-its, the back of people's necks, you know. <laughs> and uh, David has that. It's really beautiful. He sort of graffitis things. With you, do you have the cast members? Uh, he just draws his pictures. Oh, no, yeah. Oh, no. Graphic, graphic pictures. Just kind of give them to myself sometimes. Or is probably the most, uh, uh, the best storyteller I've, I've came across he can tell oh, not too bad. he yeah. can it's not gonna be that bad i'm not gonna, I'm not gonna burn you i mean he can <laughs> so he's gonna attack me no no he says that he's he can sit you down and tell you the most fascinating stories and he has a, a an amazing memory you remember names and I moments and dates yeah. you know and you can paint a picture remember me from earlier well you know yeah i mean <laughs> That was ages ago, and you know. But after me, you, and your dad get really baked, you're gonna destroy all my brain cells. But it, you know, it's the apocalypse anyway. So who cares? Man? Exactly. Let's keep our swear to a minimum, otherwise we're gonna have to bleep this interview so much. It's gonna sound so dope. <laughs> hell, <laughs> you know what? Wow, these guys are so. <laughs> just a bunch of. It is the end of the day, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's do it. We said oh, this would happen. It. It's thing. exactly how I wanted it. Serious well remembered. Uh, guys, the Umbrella Academy. Uh, I binged this in like three days. I don't know if that's called Ooh, binging. That's uh, is that called binging? Very unhealthy. No, that's great. Oh, okay. That's very healthy. That's about the yeah. That's, that's about the optimum binge, isn't it? Yeah. You save a lot of money. But that's ten hours. So like over three nights. That's three, three hours. Three six nine. That was a lot of money. Three, six, a lot of late three, nights. Three four three. What did you? How did you split it up? Three. Four four. Th Three? Yeah. Oh, that's oh, good. No, four, 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 two. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't anyway, <laughs> yeah, four, four, uh, very different to anything I've seen before, though, like really? in terms of superhero stuff, and I watch a lot of this stuff. Um, where do you guys see it sitting? Because, like I said, it's superhero fans aren't going to find it the same as superhero stuff, and other people might hear it's superhero and think it's not for them. So, I feel mm. like it's like it's very, it's very much genre defying because people won't know where to place it. So, I think people are, are either going to love this. Or they're going to hate it, <laughs> and I'm totally fine with that. Mm. Oh. Yeah, because you don't want to have something that's in the middle mm -hmm. that kind of blends in with all of these other things, which they're good content, I, you know, I'm sure. But I'd rather stick out a little bit more to yeah. the left, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like a sore thumb. Yes, a fat Who sore thumb. Doesn't like a sore thumb. <laughs> yeah, a big red sore thumb on the. On the map of culture, mainstream culture, that's mm -hmm. what we are. That's how we will label this. Um, obviously, in, in the series, their dad doesn't call them by anything other than their numbers. Except for me, he calls me saucy every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was Sorry, that was in the deleted scenes. <laughs> hey, saucy. Saucy, come here. Bring me my sauce. Saucy ass. <laughs> Bring me my cup When you guys salsa. were growing up, did you ever, do your parents ever refer to you as anything other than your names? Uh, yeah, mine called me number three, which was kind of... You said it wasn't number two. So it was very, you were met that already. Yeah. My, my mom would use my first <laughs> and my suffix when I was in trouble. David Jr. Yeah. David Jr. David Jr. Do you know what my, my dad regularly does? He'll, he'll, you know that thing where, because I'm the, I was the third sibling in the <laughs> family, the youngest. And uh, he'd go, because it was uh, Brendan, Shauna, and we had a dog as well called Walter. And he'd go, hey, uh, Walter, Bre Shauna, uh, Rob. <laughs> I think all parents suffer from that at some yeah. point, don't they? Three names. Yeah. I mean, just three he just, names. He just go the, through the roller decks. Until he goes, bingo, <laughs> got it right, come here. Yeah. yeah. Nothing too crazy. No. Nothing too crazy. It made me feel really special. <laughs> You're special now. Thanks. special now they've always got the impending apocalypse coming so if you guys only had two to three days left before the apocalypse arrived where would you go i would have i'd be like disco party yeah mm. berlin luminous banana hammock stretched across the top of my head yeah yeah body paints ecstasy <laughs> i'd yeah. i'd uh I'd, I'd smoke a joint with my dad would you can I be there? Yeah, hell yeah, you could be there. My dad doesn't do anything, so it'd be nice to kind of, you know, force feed him a, a joint. <laughs> you guys are going out rock and roll. 
Oh yeah, it's just weed. You just burn out and then blow up. Fair enough. And you yeah, can't I get in know. trouble. Yeah, I suppose I just, uh, you know, gather the gather the loved ones, you know. Yeah, <laughs> hang out with my <laughs> family. Boring, boring. It's like, yeah, you gave birth to me, so we might as well be here at the end, mother. <laughs> That's what the others have said, so you know. Oh, I'm sure. So they yeah, some really good stuff. so nice. Yeah. We're all, you see, we're all from not neglected families. That's yeah. why we're like, we're our we our moms. We chose our family. We chose our family. Uh, guys, great to see you. Good luck Thank when this you. turns again. out. Again. Again. Thank again. You. Hopefully, I'll see you again. That would be yeah. lovely. Yeah, yeah. London Zoo at night. That was the last time I was impressed by nature. Me and my uh, girlfriend at the time, we just sort of messed around with lions, like on the other side of the Perspex glass. But they kept sort of dragging things up to the glass and going, hey, you want to play? We're lions and we're awake because it's night time. Why does it have to be one word? Why is this social media generation always trying to boil everything down to one word? Relax, right? It doesn't even have to be put into words. Lampshade, there you go. What if we just tell them that we're going to let them in and then we murder them and eat them? Dear Umbrella Academy superheroes, welcome to Romania. We are Fredo and Pigeon and we'd like to be your sidekicks. Please review our attached resumes. Sidekick application Pigeon. Can fly. Is Pigeon. <laughs> can fly. He is a Pigeon. Weaknesses. Yeah. Oh, female nudity, female non-nudity. Right, so he's a, he's a ladies Pigeon. Can make instant dick joke. Applicate? Oh, accepted. I say accepted, yes. yes or no. Sidekick application, Fredo. Oh my god. He's <laughs> <laughs> he can eat. <laughs> he can and eat. He has a seductive nature. I mean, uh, is that a thong? Yeah. Mm. But he doesn't look like he's packing much, so I don't find him very threatening. No. All right, guys, you're in. Sorry, Fredo. Your breakfast, buddy. <laughs>